when Habib makes a promise, he sticks to it. And I fully believe that Habib will never fight again. What up, Fightful fam, and welcome to your Fightful Fix UFC 254 post-fight edition. We're going to take a look at Habib Nurmagomedov. It's not Nurmagomedov, get off my back, retiring after beating Justin Gaethje via round two submission at UFC 254. What it means for the future of the lightweight division, Robert Whitaker putting himself back in line for a middleweight title shot and more. But before we get there, if you could please hit like, tap subscribe, and the notification bell. That goes such a long way to helping our channel grow, and I really do appreciate it. First up, the biggest news without a doubt, Habib is retiring. He made the announcement while talking to John Anik after defeating Justin Gaethje via second round triangle choke. When speaking about the retirement, he revealed it had everything to do with the passing of his father earlier this year. Apparently around the time that he got the Justin Gaethje fight offer, Habib's mother had insisted that he stop fighting, that he shouldn't go in there without his dad's uh, presence, either you know physically or in spirit back home. Habib told his mother that he would take the Justin Gaethje fight, but promised it would be his last. And if you ask me, this is not the typical MMA retirement where they turn back around in three months, six months, two years, three years. He even mentioned this during the post-fight chat with John Attic. When Habib makes a promise, he sticks to it, and I fully believe that Habib will never fight again. So where does this put the rest of the UFC lightweight division? Well, look, Habib was masterful. My, a lot of people, including myself, had predicted that Justin Gaethje would be the toughest fight that Habib has ever had, and that did not really come to fruition. Now, all credit to Justin Gaethje. He did well early in terms of you know not letting Habib back him up to the fence landing counter shots, chipping away at his leg. At one point, he seemed to do some you know good damage to Habib's leg, but. When Habib got the takedown, it was a completely different game. We know Habib has good control on the floor, but Justin Cagey was completely out of his element in this one. As soon as Habib landed the takedown in the first one, he sliced into mount, threw up an arm bar, and nearly got it. Uh, you know, Justin Cagey was offering good defense, but the time ran down, and Justin didn't look like he was going to get out of it anytime soon. Second round, Habib lands the takedown even earlier. This time he has time to work, he throws the arm bar, switches it to a triangle choke, and chokes Justin Gaethje unconscious. Now, quick detour, I want to slap the referee upside the head, because Gaethje visibly tapped like seven times on Habib's head, and the referee just didn't do anything about it. Gaethje ultimately lost consciousness, but he is okay. So now that Habib is retired, what does that mean for the state of the UFC lightweight division? Well, there are a few options. The UFC is still aiming for Conor McGregor versus Dustin Poirier late January. Now that could potentially be for the now vacated UFC lightweight title. I would also like to see Justin Gaethje back in the mix at some point. So I kind of foresee two possibilities. Either Conor McGregor versus Dustin Poirier happens as a non-title fight, and then you have the winner fight Justin Gaethje. More likely, I think, knowing the UFC and their penchant for attaching title fights two cards. Conor McGregor is, yes, coming off that Donald Cerrone win and, and had lost to Habib prior to that. Dustin Poirier also coming off of a win against Dan Hooker after losing to Habib, but there are no real clear title challengers in the division right now. The top five currently consists of Justin Gaethje, Dustin Poirier, Tony Ferguson, Conor McGregor, and Dan Hooker. While Justin Gaethje is coming off of a loss, Tony Ferguson is coming off of a loss, and Dan Hooker is coming off of a loss. That means Dustin Poirier and Conor McGregor have the best winning streaks in the top five outside of Habib with one. So I say Dustin Poirier, Conor McGregor make it a UFC lightweight title fight, and the winner could potentially get Justin Gaethje or the winner of Michael Chandler and whoever he faces next, you know, either Tony Ferguson or Justin Gaethje at this point is what I foresee for him. When asked if Conor versus Dustin could be for the UFC lightweight title, Dana White kind of refused to answer. Good job, Jose Youngs of MMA Fighting for asking the question anyway. Okay, and let's move on very quickly to the co-main event. Robert Whitaker, former UFC middleweight champion, beats Jared Cannonier 29-28 across all three judges' scorecards. Personally, I had a 30-27, but the first two rounds were competitive. Jared Cannonier mostly stuck with leg kicks. Meanwhile, Robert Whitaker did a nice job mixing up the jabs and head kick attempts. Whitaker did outstrike his opponent and was starting to check the leg kicks the longer the fight went on. Third round is when things really cranked up. Robert Whitaker landed his sick, sick 
punch to head kick combination badly stumbled jared cannonier dropped him eventually uh opened up with some ground and pound but shout out to cannonier's intergalactic resilience whatever he likes to call it he made it back to his feet and he actually stumbled robert whitaker with a punch late in the round whitaker way too experienced in this game despite being 29 years old saw there wasn't much time left on the clock engaged in a takedown attempt and managed to control cannoneer until the final bell when asked about what is next for ufc middleweight going into this fight the narrative was from both israel disanya and ufc president dana white that if jared cannoneer won in impressive fashion the title shot was his the same was not explicitly said for robert whitaker well in the post-fight press conference dana white did confirm that what makes the most sense to him is israel disanya versus robert whitaker too uh, robert said he won't even think about booking another fight until the new year he wants to first welcome his newborn and once that is out of the way he will look forward to a fight sometime around april whether or not it will actually be izzy versus whitaker is up in the air but i think whitaker coming off of back-to-back -back wins over darren till and jared cannonier he is undoubtedly number two in this division right behind the champion if you look elsewhere on the card number three is currently paulo costa he was dominated by adesanya much like whitaker was then you have jack hermanson at four yoel romero at five and darren till at six if you're not going to give the fight to whitaker you know adesanya has sort of stated that he wants to clear out the division not do rematches against people he's already thoroughly beat I think if you're not going to give the title shot to Robert Whitaker, I would be completely fine with giving the title shot to Jack Hermanson should he beat Darren Till. I know the MMA math doesn't really work out because Cannoneer so decisively beat Hermanson, but if Adesanya is not going to take a rematch against Whitaker and is staying at middleweight, I think Jack Hermanson is the only real candidate. If Darren Till wins, I guess you could make that fight, but he lost to Whitaker, so I don't know how you're going to have him jump the pack there. And as we wrap up, let's take a look at some really quick fire news from the UFC 254 post-fight press conference. Dana White revealed to the press that Habib had apparently broken his foot three weeks out from the fight with Justin Gaethje and kept it a secret. So if you had any doubt in Habib's toughness or resiliency, you really shouldn't, but there you go. Dana White also told John Morgan of MMA Junkie that he expects the UFC to be back at Fight Island late January or early February. So we're going to make a quick turnaround on that end. He also said that Leon Edwards versus Hamzat Shemaev has officially been signed to headline an upcoming fight night card. And he believes that uh, Habib Nurmagomedov will stay retired. He believes him to be a man of his word and doesn't suspect that we're going to see Habib fight again. When asked about the domestic abuse allegations levied against Mike Perry by his ex-wife, Danielle Nickerson, Dana White sort of dodged the question. And to those interested in the Zufa boxing saga, Dana White did confirm that, you know, he had been speaking with Floyd Money Mayweather about doing something together. Wouldn't exactly uh, double down on what that was. And a quick shout out to UFC 254's award bonus winners. Nathaniel Wood and Casey Kenny earned 50 grand each for putting on a crazy competitive high pace fight of the night battle at a 140 pound catch weight. Although the winner... Casey Kenny uh, will likely get, or at least deserves, a top 15 bantamweight opponent in his next fight. And the performance of the night winners, no surprise, one goes to Habib for a second round triangle choke finish of Justin Gaethje. And the second bonus goes to Magomed Ankalaev, who also separated his opponent from consciousness, destroying Ion Kutelaba with a vicious KO and putting to doubt any arguments from their awkward first encounter. Congratulations to those guys. And that is it for today's Fightful Fix. Let me know in the comments section, guys, what do you think should happen with the UFC lightweight title picture now that Habib was retired and how surprised are you by the announcement? If you like this video, the best way you can help our channel grow, hit like, tap subscribe, and smash that notification bell for Habib. I'm Shaquille Madjuri for Fightful MMA, and stay tuned for everything Fightful and so delightful. That's so bad. Fightful.